So last time we left off by actually setting up our lobby and our waiting room and actually getting them to work properly. We also made it so that our game actually stores the player names and our waiting room actually makes proper use of those names by displaying them in the waiting room for all the players currently in said waiting room. Now what I'm going to be showing you this time is what I'm going to be demonstrating here where if every player currently in the waiting room clicks on the ready button then it will actually load the map or world world that we created. So with that said, let's jump right in. So before we do anything, we want to go to project, project settings, and we want to scroll down until we find the window option. This option should be under display. Then inside the window options, there should be an option called mode. Then we want to set the mode option to be 2D. Then we also want to set aspect to keep. And basically what we just did here is we made it so that our game actually keeps its aspect ratio if we resize it. Now I'm just going to create a new scene, make sure it's a 2D scene, and I'm going to rename it to world. As a child of the world, I'm going to add a normal node and I'm going to rename it to players. And this is basically going to serve as a container for later on when we actually spawn our players. Then I'm adding a tile map as a child of the world and I'm also adding a position 2D as a child of it as well. Then I'm simply saving my world scene in a new folder called world and I'm making sure that both the folder name and the file name are lowercase because I'm following Goldath's styling guide. Then with my tile map node selected, I can actually go to the right and then click on tile set, empty, new tile set, and then click on tile set once more. And before I do anything, I want to create a new folder called assets. Inside the assets folder, I'm going to create another folder and I'm going to call that sprites. And then I can actually click on icon.png, go over to import preset 2D, preset once more, and then set as default for texture. Now I can actually go over to my files and click and drag my sprites into the sprites folder I just created. And with that, my sprites should be imported into my project. Now, if I go back to scene, tile map, and then I go to visibility under canvas item, self modulate, I can set it to whatever color I want. In this case, I'm using a blue color. You can set it to whatever you want. And this is basically making it so that our tile map isn't just white. And then I'm clicking on tile set once more, clicking the plus button here and selecting my square.png sprite. Then I am going to click on the new single tile button, make sure region is on and the snap is on and I'm going to click and drag, I'm going to select collision, click on the square and then click and drag, Collu <laughs> occlusion and square and then click and drag. <laughs> then with the tile map selected, we actually have our tiles there but the cell size is actually the wrong size. So I want to set that to 32 and 32 for both X and Y and then I can just click and drag and start creating my world. And just go ahead and create your test world or level that you want to use. In this case, this is what I'm going to be using. So with that done, I can go over to script, then in the server.gd script, I can start writing a new function called load game. Inside this function, I am actually going to be doing an RPC ID call to the server. So since I'm going to the server, I want to do one comma and then the name of the function I want to call on the server. So in this case, it's going to be load world. Then I'm adding another function. In this case, it's a sync function called start game. And inside that function, I'm doing var world is equal to preload and then the path to my world scene and then dot instance. And then I want to do get tree dot get root dot add child. And inside the parentheses, I'm passing the world to it. Then I want to do get tree dot get root dot get node. And in this case, it's going to be the lobby. Then I want to do dot q3. Now don't forget to actually add the parentheses for the get tree. And with that, that's basically it for our clients. All we have left to do is actually call the load game function, which we're going to do in our lobby.gd script in the ready button press. So do server.load game and you're done. Now on the server side, I'm going to create a new scene and it's going to be a 2D scene and I'm going to rename it to world. As a child of the world, I'm going to add a normal node. So 
once I add that node, I'm gonna rename it to players and it's gonna I'm gonna make sure that the nodes have the exact same name as they do in my client and they have the exact same path. So I'm just actually saving the world scene uh, with lowercase because that's how it's in the client in a folder called world as well. So make sure that they have the exact same name, otherwise none of the code will work. And I'm only adding these two nodes because I don't actually need the rest of the nodes in this case because these are the only two nodes I'm actually going to be using to do my RPC calls. Now on my server.gd script I want to add a function, in this case it's a remote function load world which is the function we're calling on our client. Then I want to set up a new variable called ready players and we're going to set it equal to zero and back in our load world function we're going to do ready players plus equals one if players.size is greater than one and ready players is greater than or equal to player that size then we want to do an rpc call back to our clients and in this case the rpc call is going to be calling the start game function that we set up on our clients then underneath that line we want to do var world is equal to preload and in this case we're going to preload our world scene once again and we want to do dot instance and it's pretty similar to the client, honestly. And underneath that uh, world line that we just wrote, we want to do get tree dot get root dot add child world, and make sure that it's actually that instance. And with that, you're done. Now let's actually test this. So if we run our server, it should start. So we do get server started. So that's good. Now if we go to our client, before we actually do anything, we want to go to editor, editor settings. We want to scroll down and go to the network debug and make sure that the remote port is actually set to a different number from our server project. Now if we run our client project, we are taken to the lobby. Uh, we actually want to run another instance of this so we can actually test it. So let me actually do that here real quick. So there we go, we have a second instance of the game. So now if I actually go inside there and let me just change the name to raise one and raise two and join, we do get our waiting room. Now if we click ready, it actually doesn't start the game because we did write that piece of logic over on the server where in order to actually start the game, we actually have to have all the players in the waiting room actually be ready. So if I actually click the ready button on our second instance, it will actually load the map or world that we just created. So with that, you are done. So next time we're actually going to get our players to spawn. So look forward to that. So yeah, the links to the GitHub project will be in the description. And also at the time of this recording, we are actually on our way to 100 subscribers. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.